As I spoke with him, he was very deliberate in his choice of words. He began slowly. I think I lost my faith. He paused for a moment. It was clear he was thinking. And then said, no, that's not it. I know what I believe. I know what I'm passionate about. I know the way I want to live. What I'd lost is my faith community. I don't have people in my life who share my beliefs, my values, my passions, who don't want to live the way I'm living. This man's perspective, this man's experience is really unique because of his circumstances. But I think many people today are experiencing a sense of disconnection from communities of faith. They're not sure where to find others who believe and value the things that they believe and value and how to live those out in the world in productive ways. So today I want to talk about that. And as I do, I want to invite you to subscribe to this channel as well as to click the bell so that you're notified of future videos. As I said, this man's experience is unique. He grew up in the rural United States. He grew up in a family that went to a conservative Christian church that was essentially fundamentalist in its approach. And in college, he came to begin to understand the teachings of Jesus differently. He says that he began to read the Gospels and, and realized that Jesus was really a radical. He was a socialist that Jesus was all about caring for the poor and the people who were marginalized and, and trying to make their lives better, and that followers of Jesus need to be doing the same thing. So today he calls himself a radical, and he says that the Gospels radicalized him. You know, many people have come to these same conclusions, but for this, this man, you know, he finds that today he's involved in many different groups that work for the betterment of people, for, for medical care, for social justice, for economic justice. And he finds that in these different organizations and groups, there are a lot of many motivated people, there are many motivated people, but that they don't share his faith perspective. And that when he goes around church folks, they don't share his commitment to make the world a better place. He told me that some people recommended to him to checking out some progressive Christian churches. And he said that he went to some in different denominations, but while he found that they understood the teachings of Jesus from a similar perspective and, and that they recommended some great books and other study aids for him, that when push came to shove, their churches were really about taking care of each other that they were really about the people who were there, not about doing good in the world, that maybe they collected food once a month for the food bank, and, or maybe they sent some volunteers to work in a homeless shelter now and then. But that wasn't the main focus of their life as a church. And he was looking for something that was really much more focused on balancing that spiritual reality with social justice. As I think about the people I've worked with in spiritual direction under the age of about 40 or 45, I find that many people really have the same kind of experience. They understand that their spiritual experience isn't just for them, but that it's meant to do something in the world that's going to be positive, that's going to make a difference. And they don't find others to share that with. And some of these folks that I've worked with in spiritual direction have been ordained ministers who were young. They've been people with advanced degrees in theology or psychology. And they're looking for that connection and experience a great deal of isolation and aren't sure what to do. On the other end of the spectrum, there are people in my age group, many of my friends and colleagues who have come to a point where we recognize that the experiences we had when we were younger of communities of faith that nurtured us, that were vibrant for us, well, they just don't exist. 
And while we may want to try to help others find that, we're not quite sure what to do because our experience doesn't translate in the way that the culture has translated across generations. So what's been meaningful for us isn't necessarily meaningful to anyone else. But yet we experience, us older folks, many of us are also experiencing that lack of connection to a spiritual community, a community of faith. So what do we do when we experience that isolation, where we have our values, our faith, our practice, and we're not sure how to connect that with others? Well, I think the first step is to remember to continue to grow in our spiritual practice or spiritual reality, whatever that may be, our meditation, our prayer, our yoga, wherever we find that wholeness, and allow that to continue to transform us, to help us to grow further and further. In addition, to continue to look for ways to connect with others, to share that experience with others. Maybe it's with family members, maybe it's with friends, maybe it's in online groups, and perhaps through that, begin to tease out some threads of connection and community. Maybe those connections will come and go. Maybe they will begin to germinate. That's unclear, but we need to continue to try. Spiritual direction can be a third thing to consider because when meeting with the spiritual director every month or six weeks, we have the opportunity to reflect with the spiritual director, both our spiritual experience and that need for connection. And perhaps for a time that spiritual director may be the connecting point, but again, that may begin to germinate and flower and grow to something more than we can imagine. As I reflect on these things, it's winter. I look out of the window of my study and my lawn is brown. The grass appears to be dead. The trees are twigs. They also appear to be dead. But I know that winter is a dormancy that's necessary for the spring to come, for new life to sprout. Similarly, it is my hope that the experience of the lack of community and connection, of a community of faith, may also be a kind of dormancy. And in time, some new life may sprout, that something may grow, but that only happens when we continue to be engaged, when we continue to look for possibilities, as because as we're looking for those possibilities, as we engage with others, new life may begin to germinate and we may find a way forward. Thanks for your time. Be sure to subscribe to this channel, leave me some comments, like the video, share it with others because you're not alone on this spiritual journey. Share it with others and talk with others about it. And know that I appreciate the time you spend on Spirituality Beyond Borders. Have a great day.